Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today I want to talk about how hormonal birth control could potentially delay your fertility. Before we get started today, today is actually your last day to sign up for my Chart Your Cycle course, which starts tomorrow, December 20th. It's not a huge time commitment. It is sent to you via email. You get four lessons delivered each Wednesday over a period of a month and you then have them to work through um, at your own pace and then you can go back and look at the information as much as you want because I find that especially even now after years of charting I still reference back all the time or if I just have questions so it's yours to have once you take it and you can work through it now you can work through it again in three months whatever you may want I will link my website up top as well as put the link for the course down in the description box. If you're curious about signing up, you got today's sign up. So let's get into the video. Most women can expect their cycle to return to normal within a few months of coming off of hormonal birth control, but other women experience months and months of confusing and irregular cycles and just really wondering like what's going on. Not to mention that being on hormonal birth control could be actually masking an underlying hormonal issue that could be detrimental to your fertility in the long run without you even knowing about it. So we're gonna start by sharing a hypothetical story with you. So in real life, I got on the pill at the age of 18, right after I graduated from high school. I was on it for just shy of four years, I believe, getting off of it at the age of 22. So let's say for the sake of the story that I didn't get off the pill. I'm now 26 years old, happily married, but not quite ready to start a family yet. Let's say hypothetical Victoria is ready at the age of 28 to start trying to have kids. At this point, hypothetical Victoria has been on the pill for about 10 years. So I get off the pill and we start trying to conceive and you know, things just really aren't going so well. My cycles aren't consistent. I'm not even sure if I'm ovulating. And after about eight months of trying, I go into the doctor and end up getting put on a couple rounds of Clomid to see if that can help jumpstart ovulation. So Clomid can actually turn your cervical fluid into an inhospitable environment for sperm. And while most of us know that to create a baby, you need an egg and you need sperm. But there's a third factor here that a lot of people don't talk about and don't give it the credit it deserves. And that's definitely cervical fluid. You need good fertile quality cervical fluid for the sperm to be able to make it even to the egg before anything else happens. So the clomid doesn't work and I go into a fertility doctor and talk about my options with IUI or IVF. And if I do have the money for either of these treatments, I can then prepare myself for a few months, but in reality, it's usually like a few years, if not many years of treatment to get to the point of having a healthy, happy baby. There is a 10 to 20% success rate after one cycle of IUI. And after three to six cycles, there's usually a pregnancy success rate of 80%. So the cost for all this varies a lot, but from what I found, um, one round of IUI can cost anywhere from $300 to $1,000. And that within itself is a big range. And with only a 10 to 20% success rate after one cycle, you're looking at quite a bit of money there. And then if that doesn't work, you have to look at IVF. And that is where things get really crazy and really expensive. The cost for a round of IVF varies a lot just like with IUI, but I found that kind of the average here in the US is around $11,500 and that is a chunk of change. If you're curious about learning more about cervical fluid, Eric Odeblad, I think I'm pronouncing his name right or wrong, I'm not quite sure, but he has done some really interesting research on cervical fluid and cervical crypts. So according to Odeblad, there are three types of cervical glands which are called crypts. There's S, L, and G. S crypts make S mucus and this is the mucus that is that stringy really egg whitey like really good quality cervical fluid when you're looking to try to get pregnant and this is a cervical fluid that you'll see around ovulation normally if everything is in order and the role of this particular fluid the S mucus is to create actual like swimming lanes for the sperm to make their way up to the egg. L crypts make L mucus which kind of act as like a level of defense and they knock out the low quality sperm from making their way through. And then finally, G crypts make G mucus, which is made in the lowest part of your cervix and it creates a impenetrable mucus that the sperm can't get through. And according to Odeblad, the G mucus is actually part of our immune system and it kind of is a layer of defense from things getting in and affecting our immune system. Now, while that is all fascinating, he goes further on to talk about the differences in our crypts and our fluid 
when it comes to taking the pill and getting pregnant or not having any pregnancy, there are different rates of cervical atrophy depending on each. It turns out that pregnancy slows the rate of cervical atrophy while taking the birth control speeds it up twice the rate of a normal never pregnant cervix and more than three times higher than a pregnancy slowed cervix. From three to 15 months of being on the pill, there is a greater loss of those S crypts than can be replaced by your body. And if you can recall, those S crypts are the very important ones for that very fertile egg white stringy fluid that is necessary. And if you can remember what I said about conception and pregnancy and the importance of cervical fluid, you can see why this starts to be a problem, especially if the woman is put on Clomid as well. A pregnancy, surprisingly enough, actually hits a refresh button on your cervix. I would have never guessed that. A pregnancy is like a fountain of youth for your cervix and it takes like two to three years off the age of your cervix. For each year you're on the pill, your cervix ages by a year. So if I understand this all correctly, which I think I do, I was on the pill for four years. I'm 26 years old, therefore I have the cervix of a 30 year old. But if I can pop out a kid or two, that will get my cervix back on track to my actual age, if not make it younger, which I think is very interesting. So kind of looking at it from this scope, from my view, hormonal birth control can affect your fertility, but this isn't to say that if you've taken something or if you're on something that you're never gonna be able to get pregnant. That's not true. I think it's just really important to understand these things and to understand that something that we're putting into our body every single day is going to have an impact on stuff and we can't say it's not going to. I just think we really need to start addressing this whole misconception we have about our fertility. It's like as soon as we get our periods, people are terrified of our fertility and oh my God, like don't you dare get pregnant. Okay, get on the pill, be safe. And then as soon as you wanna have babies, you can get off it and you'll magically get pregnant. And then there's just like, there's so much shame and sadness and just confusion when it comes to infertility and it breaks my heart. I don't have the answer. I'm not even pretending I have the answer, but I just feel like more needs to be put into what's going on before we get to that point of being infertile. While I still think you should put time and effort into how to achieve a pregnancy and a healthy baby once you reach that point, I think we need to put more emphasis in what happens and what is happening beforehand. I also discovered in my research for this video, the lingering effects of the Depo-Vera shot. So even though the effectiveness of the shot wears off after three months, the median time for the return to your fertility is 10 months after the shot. So it's said that if you're thinking about having a kid within the next year or two or something like that, that you shouldn't get the shot. And I just thought that was interesting. In the end, with one in eight couples struggling with infertility, I think there's definitely something going on. That is kind of what I have to say today. I hope it made sense. I hope it was organized in a way that was easy to understand. Sometimes I get jumbled in my thoughts, but that is what I have to say on how hormonal birth control could potentially indirectly affect your fertility, if not directly affect it. That's what I'm saying. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to Femhead for more videos like this, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.